Ray. Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's uh, Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I'm joined today by Matt from uh, Essex, Eddie Earn's neighbour. <laughs> How are you doing, Matt? I'm well, mate. I'm well yourself. Yeah, I'm plodding on as you do. You got to do, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, today's topic, I don't really want to make it about Eddie Earn all the time and match them, but they're dominating, aren't they? It's like people don't want to talk about Liverpool in Premier League, but if they far, everything's big news, isn't it? If it's a foul or a VAR decision, it's all over YouTube, isn't it? Absolutely. So it's hard not to talk about Eddie, especially when he's making stories up. Like today's story, hmm, it's a shocking one, this one, isn't it? Right. Today's story is Eddie Earn says that he's number one, his best selling book. Across all categories, it isn't number one. It's not even in top 20, mate. Across all, ca all categories. It's just one lie after another, isn't it? It's never ending, isn't it? It's never ending. Ugh, people, ugh, people just lap it up, don't they? People let the uh, let the let the let the nonsense up and uh, just believe anything they say. Anything he says, it's like don't um, like he don't tell uh, don't tell porky pigs in it. It's <laughs> he's. Out and out, he just lies every day, every day in every interview. He lying about something, and um, yeah. that's that's what promoters do. That's yeah. what promoters do. They're good at it. That's that's a part of their job. Yeah. So, um, and he's good at his job. We we'll give him, let's give him a bit of credit. He's just good at what he does. Yeah, I just don't. You know, like, let's be honest. I don't like the bullshit that was fed. I mean, for example. I'm going to read this out here. Right. Here we go. Eddie Earn, number one on bestsellers. Right, there you go. Number one book. So he says, <clears throat> my mate said me this, just looked, not in the top ten across all, all, all categories. I've checked, it's not in the top 20. It's not on the Sunday Times bestseller list. Just look, not in the top. Oh, I've just read that out. It's uh, the Sunday Times bestseller list. There you go. Here we go. These, this is top ten. Uh, me by Elton John, number one. Then you've got number two, The Body by Bill. Tall Tales, number three by Wee Storage, Billy Conley. So uh, Rainer win four. It goes on and on and on. He's not. He's not. That's top ten. He's semi, but I've checked tonight. Like top twenty. Uh, I have the drive to out outperform my dad. An interview by Eddie Earn with the big issue. You know that uh, big paper that homeless people sell. Yep. Yep. Eddie Earn's done an interview with that, and he's telling them about being relentless. This is a man. I said everything done for him. When has he ever been up against adversity? This is what gets under my skin. And these casuals lap it up, don't they? And he knows that. Every time I see an interview about him, he's he's giving he's giving it this in it for his book. <laughs> Imagine if I were doing that every interview. I'd look a helmet, wouldn't I? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, he he knows what he knows this sort of, he knows the casual audience will look to buy the book and uh they're uh they buy anything what he says and sells well they are they're and, not uh, that, that, because it's not in it's not in charts it's been uh, he'll, pretend, he'll plug it though he'll plug it and he'll he'll promote it so and uh what he needs to start doing is promoting more of his fight some of his fighters who he can't get dates and start well, looking to get him opportunities well i sent a message to coogan cassius and i said coogan here you go. I sent him the, the top 10 list, the picture that Eddie's put on his social media. Number one. It's big. It's number one. I've, and it's not number one bestseller in time. So I sent Coogan the list. Coogan, when you sit down with Eddie this week, we ask him about this, these, these porkies he's telling. Because it's constantly now. They're just... They're rolling off his tongue, aren't they, now? 
the mass. It's yeah. like the one with Chisora when he said, "Well, I believed that he got up at eight and all this." It, it's massive. The massive. The lies now are massive, and he's running riot and he's annoying me. You're annoying me, Eddie. And Coogan, if you don't go to Kell Brook's fight next week, you will annoy me as well. All right, because all that relationship that you've built up with Kell Brook, it'll all be spoiled if you don't go to his fight. That's what how I look at it anyway. What do you think? No UK, no, no UK media will be attending that fight. I'm very, I can't, I can't see none of them going. Why are they going to blame virus? Yeah, absolutely, uh, definitely. They've gone anyway, though. Um, I think, I, think, with Matthew, I, the guy, Brook I, I think a few of them would have gone. I think IFL might have sent someone over. I think Boxing Social might have sent someone over. There's too many people in the boxing industry chatting a lot of rubbish and then hiding behind this virus. For example, people saying we're going to do this fact, going to do that, and then just to get just to stay in line, right? I'm not going to say any names, but then they're just. And I'm like, no, I don't believe any of that. I don't believe that. Don't chat shit around me. And then fights are dropping off left, right and centre, aren't they? Yeah, no, no, nothing's, nothing's material. Nothing's materialising. We're having posters printed up for title fights and fights are being cancelled. <laughs> We're in the middle of a pandemic, aren't we? But why, why, why say they're going to do something and not do it? It's my pet eight. Eddie Hearn's putting shows on, isn't he? The grafting through. So why can't these other people that are putting shows on stick to the word? But falling by wayside, aren't they? Moving dates and all that. It's it's rubbish. I don't want that kind of rubbish around me. Messing people's lives up while they're feathering their own nests. That's what's wrong with boxing. Um, I mean, where do we go? Where do we, where do we start with... Um... Just messing fights, careers up. I mean, well, Terry O'Connor <laughs> messed that Vasquez is up, and he won't come back. Trail one, he <laughs> I didn't beat him. Yeah, that's oh, why. Louis Switzerland, I love his team to death. What we tell it straight on here, I thought he got beat. Uh, and then you've got what happened at weekend last weekend, sorry, where Coldwell and Bellew try, trying to smack out Chisora won the fight so that they could scream blue murder to get a rematch because how it's working now is even if judges go against the scores that they want, if enough people on social media get behind these people, they can push for a rematch. I mean, they did it with Linares, didn't they, Crawler? Crawler were nowhere near in that first fight. They did it with Paul Smith, Abraham. He were nowhere, nowhere near in either, either of them fights. You go into Germany... To fight Abraham, we're mindset we're going to get a job here. You know when you go there, you need a knockout. If you don't get a knockout, you're not going to win. You know the script before you go, don't you? So if you kick up enough stink about the scores, you can get another payday. But it work, it's a two-way street, that. John Ryder beat Callum Smith, in my opinion. Callum's a great fighter, though. He beat him, but there were no fuss kicked up there, and it was closer than Paul Smith Abraham, wasn't it? So Tesco can't have it both ways, can he, Matt? No, he can't. He can't. But I mean, I think if you beat someone, you go over to these hometowns and you you beat someone like eight rounds. You there's undeniable, even seven rounds. You win them seven rounds clearly, where it can't be contested. Wherever you are in the world, if you're fighting on whatever planet, it doesn't matter. You should get that decision. But obviously, you're going into your you, in that scenario where you're fighting away from home. You're going into that with the back of your mind, when you just need to do that bit more. And unfortunately, that's the way it is. Shouldn't work like that, but it does. Yeah. So, what do you think about the situation with Callum Johnson and Natasha Jonas and Callum Smith? I think. The, I think the Callum Johnson one's just disgusting. I think it's just, a, just the, the way the, the way he said it in the interview and the arrogance about well, I'm not obligated to give him a fight. I mean, yeah, I think the the, the plan is probably just to 
just to freeze him out, put him on the sidelines, and then maybe feed him to Baratzi so Baratzi can get him when he's just more past it. He's 35 now. He so knows this as well. Isn't it, Callum? Pardon? 36 after Christmas, isn't he? Yeah. This, 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 like, he's not getting any younger. And even though my, even though miles, miles are not on the clock for him. I like him, Callum Johnson, as well. You know, he's had a rough ride. And he never seems to be one of them that's hanging out at the back of IFL, does he, or boxing socially. He just goes about his business, doesn't he? A bit like Callum Smith, isn't he, and Beefy. The, and the, the Savannah Marshall, Yui Fury. All of them are all out in the cold, aren't they? We noticed. I know Savannah's just had her fight, but they haven't really mentioned her since then, have they? They didn't invite her down to Sky this week, did they? Or last week. Do you know what I mean? They've not, they're not behind the mother here and Yui. Do you know what I mean? No, they're just, they're, they're just swept aside. And you, you, you look at the way Callum John, you look at the way Callum Johnson fights. It's an entertaining, fan-friendly style. It's, it's not someone who's going to disappoint. It's someone who's going to come to fight. He's got some really, really good domestic. He's got another world title in him. He's got another world title fighting yeah, him. Yeah, easily. And he's, got, and he's got he's got domestic dust ups as well. We're talking about Baratzi Yard. He's right in that mix as well. Lyndon Arthur. He's right in that mix. Lyndon Arthur. You know? Lyndon Arthur. Yep. Lee Hutchinson. Yep. He's he's in that mix. So. And not listen. He's what he's, he's in one of them situations. No one's ever done anything for him, has he? He's all he's, no. he's done it. Sort of, it's done it the hard way. He might not get himself out there like the rest of them and shout his mouth off and that. But it's not. In, it's, some of them are. Some boxers just want to keep themselves to themselves, fight and and do that. And look, he's when he's gone over to America every time he's had a he's had a losing performance versus Bateria. There's no shame in that. He's he's far and away the head and shoulders the best everybody out there. And he's beat Shawnee Monan in Shawnee Monan's not not the best, but the way he destroyed him was impressive. And um you know you want to see more of that. And it's just done nothing for him. It is just no even even before the lockdown, there was no real urgency to get him out. You know, time time's ticking with some of these fighters. And listen, some of these promoters, it's, it's their lives in their hands, you know what I mean? And I don't think some people, some fans realise that, you know. He's not the only one. But he's not the only one. Warren does it. All, all, all the big promoters do it with, with people that don't really sell tickets, not mainstream. But just to, just on that side there, but obviously a lot better than just your average or your normal British European level fighter. Yeah. But it still don't make it right, does it? And yeah. it, it it does it 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 just gives it just gives me the ump to just watching good fighters just sit on sidelines and you just you're missing out on their primes, isn't you? We're missing out on seeing their primes. And do you feel that? The people in boxing at the moment who don't want to put themselves out there on social media and don't want to go that extra yard and they feel that they're getting left behind. Yep, they're getting they are getting left behind. Exactly right. Look at Natasha Jones. Left, they, they're just getting swept to the side. Natasha Jonas has got a rematch with Harper. She's got a fight, but she's got potential fights with Katie Taylor, um, Michaela Mayer from uh, the top rank. The girl who's just won the title. There's plenty of fights there for her. Uh, Chantel Cameron. They're all around the same white class, you know. And these fights would be there to be made, and they're fan friendly styles. They might not be. They're two minute rounds, not which I'm not a fan of, but. They're competitive fights, and that's what we yeah. want to see. That's what we want to see. Women's yeah. box, but women's boxing might not be everyone's cup of tea. But yeah. you give me a good, good fan friendly fight. I mean, Katie Taylor fighting Defel- Delphine Bassoon twice. I mean that that was a good entertaining fight. Give me them every time. I'm not fussed. I want to see good fights. Give me Shannon Courtney, Rachel 
Go ball rematch. Yep. We want to see that, won't we? Yeah, absolutely. There's, uh, and I'm sure there's a few others in that weight right, right class coming up. Terry Harper, Jonas. They'll have that when Terry Harper loses a belt, won't they? As a domestic pension off, won't they? Some of you think? Mm, depends what sort of pressure. Depends what sort of this depends what sort of pressure they um they put on Terry Harper to do that. I think she'd take the re. I don't, don't see why not they take the rematch. Maybe uh, outside influences will get involved, but like on this point, Russ, this is where Sky need to be getting involved. Yeah, right. Obviously, they don't make the matches, but this is where they've got to be demanding and say, look, we want blah blah blah. Blah 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 to be fighting. We want Callum Johnson. We want Natasha Jonas. We want Callum Smith back on. We want Josh Warrington. All these fighters that are not getting out. We need. We we want to see them fight. And this, the people, ran Sky. The people who are pulling the strings behind the scene have got to be demanding that. This is how I look at it, right? Savannah Marshall against that girl she's just beat Anna, Anna Rankin. They the sky wanted Rankin to win that, you know. I'm telling you now, mate. He wanted to you win. think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard back, mate. He wanted them to win. They wanted her to win that because she's more of a personality than Savannah, isn't she? Just because Savannah don't want to hang out at back of people doing interviews all the time. She's, that's not in her makeup. Now Eddie Hearn's done two big long interviews since then. Not mentioned them, mate. Not mentioned there. Why aren't they bending over backwards to get Clarissa Shields over here and get them at it at 160 or 168? Oh, 175, Savannah can go all the way up. She's she mm. that hard. She'll get in ring at 170 at, at 175. She won't get in at 190 like the, the other ones at a low at light heavy because there ain't that many in division. You just seen what she done to that ranking. She took her to school and beat her up, didn't she? Good performance. Enjoyed that. But no, I don't see any big sky thing surrounding her. Terry Harper worked in a chippy, didn't she, for for a short period of time, and they've got behind her, haven't they? It's a great story. Plus, she's come out as a lesbian, hasn't she, on Sky Sports website? So you can imagine them all going on about all this equality thing and thing like that. Well, that's their business, isn't it? But point I want to make is. They'll mould that story, but they'll not get behind Natasha Jonas, who's got a kid, and she's been to the Olympics and been in with Katie Taylor and represented the country. There were no behind her that fight week, were there? Do you see where I'm coming from? They'll get behind your Tony Bellews, who's never beat a champion and is fighting David A. held together by Sellotate, but they don't seem to get behind Callum Johnson, who won a gold medal at Commonwealth and got in with Baturbia. Uh, 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 when nobody else wanted to, or Yui Fury, who's been in with Parker, who I thought he beat, Povetkin, I thought he lost the Povetkin fight, I thought he got old man in the last three or four rounds, and Poole, if he got cut in round two, when Dylan White pulled out, nobody's getting behind Yui, he's just turned 26, he's got another 12 year in game, and he 10 year, why are they getting yeah. behind? When Derek Chisora were put forward, right, for that fight, three week after, He'd just been scored a full sec to fight White. Why weren't you if you his name put in mix? Nobody were talking about you, were they? Why not? Buncey has come out tonight and put some out, but I've been pushing it for a couple last few few weeks, this. And especially since his name wasn't mentioned. And Terry on his, Terry Chapman Armour's pod, uh, Beyond Boxing. It used to be the beautiful boxing podcast. If you Google the beautiful boxing podcast, it'll come up as uh, Beyond Boxing episode two. Watch that, and you'll you'll see what what Terry said about Yui. Yui's got a skill set, and he's right. He don't need a big long camp for Dylan White because the skills are already there, and they don't need to make weight. It's just a case of for, that three week would have done him, wouldn't it, Yui? But weren't Yui already fighting on card anyway, or fighting a few week after? So it wouldn't have made no difference to put Yui in with White, would it? No, but maybe they're just looking at the way the styles go in that fight. Yeah, but Dylan White not want to fight back, and they've they've ended up taking him off the off the show now. And and look who's headlining. Conor Ben. Conor Ben's mm. headlining. Who's his best three wins? Who's his mm. best win to be headlining the Sky Show? Conor Ben. 
He's still a novice kid, and he's got a lot to learn, and he's still a baby, isn't he? He shouldn't be headlining that, should he? Come on, come on, Connor Ben, right? What about Beefy Smith? Why don't they let Beefy Smith have a run out? Why don't they put him in with Cheeseman? Cheeseman's not got a fight, has he? Put Beefy in with Cheeseman. Why can't they put Callum Smith in with John Ryder? Why? Get him earning before Christmas. I don't, I don't understand the mentality of them all. Are they all... Is it the boxers' fault, the managers, the trainers, or the promoters? Because there's only four people at fault. Sky are only TV people. That, do you see what I mean? They know these fights are good. So who's at fault? Oh, there's only four people involved. It's one of them, isn't it? Am I right? Yeah. Uh, do you think... Uh, I think that a lot of people are turning turning um, John yeah. Ryder down. John Ryder. John Ryder's yeah. a world-class fighter, mate. Look, you'd say John Ryder's European stroke world level, wouldn't you? Fr fringe. Fringe world, fringe world level, yes. Yeah, but if, it, but if it had got that win against Callum Smith, we'd be saying he's world-class world, world level, wouldn't we? But he didn't get the nod, did he? True, but... How long ago I mean, that, now, Mark? That was a year ago, wasn't it? Last November. So that's a year. So John White Ryder's been inactive a year. Yeah. Yeah. So he's not had no money for a year, John Ryder. I said he ain't had any money in it in the last 12 months. You betcha. You betcha, mate. I'm all right, Jack. But what about his fighters? Eh? Well, I'm all right. It's the same old people getting the same old chances. It's got to be shared out a bit better. It's got to be. And that goes to Sky, Frank Hall as well. A Sky not putting up the money with the correct money to make these fights on a Saturday night fight. They're saying, night. They're saying it's the well, they're, they're saying it's the same money, and I believe them because it's three million a year, isn't it, for Eddie Earn, right? Yeah. Twenty shows, right? So, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, three million quid, twenty shows. That's hundred and fifty grand a show. If he chooses to do that in in first 10, 12 shows. That's up to him, isn't it? All right? But it works out at 150 a show. But how they work it, because they're, they're accountants by name, accountants by nature, aren't they? How they'll work it on the non-pay-per-views, what they'll do, and, and, I, and I've heard this off loads of people and I study the game, man. this is what they'll do. They'll keep the gate and the 150 from Sky will pay the, the, the money on the show, right? They'll keep the gate and maybe the sponsorship. That's why they sell the hell out of the shows with all these YouTubers that are hanging out of the back of them because the more tickets they sell, the more for them. That's their cut. You see where I'm coming from? The Sky Money pays the fighters on them non-pay-per-views and maybe a bit of sponsorship covers rest. But their gate, that's their money. And I can see where they're coming from because you wouldn't want to lose that when you've been having it good for 10 years, would you? As soon as somebody comes along and cuts your corns, oh, you've got to cut everybody else's, aren't you? That's all they're doing. I don't believe they're wrecking even because they're accountants. People like that don't. Right? Greed motivates. Like I said, it reaches inside into Korea. You've seen it with him. They're, they're obsessed. They're obsessed by money and targets and numbers. You've just seen it with his book, haven't you? He knocked that up in in, in, in middle of lockdown, whatever. They knocked that up. All you do with your book, you just have an interview with people. Then he started one, hasn't he? Somebody comes and interviews you uh, 20 times. And you've got 20 chapters. That's how they'll do it. It'll be 40 hours, two hours a time. It's like we're addicted to phone. They do rest. That's it. That's your book done. You'd have to type it all up and go run out and run out. You know, you promote it on IFL. Two hours a week, two hours a week, sat with somebody. It's only like he's doing an interview with IFL. Yeah, I'm going to do an interview with you two hours a week, turn it into a book. Coogan, you'll promote it. Sky will promote it. Match on Boxing will promote it. Boxing Social behind the gloves. And that's it. And then that's how they do it. It's not like anybody else who wants to do a book where they've got to do all hard graft. It's easy, isn't it, when you're at top of game? But it's pure greed. It's greed, and it, like I said, it reaches into Korea. Now, he's got time to mess about doing books, but he hasn't got time to get Beefy Smith, Natasha Jonas fights, has he? Callum Johnson, Callum Smith, John Ryder. 
the list is endless, isn't it? Who are, who are not getting fights at matchups? Do you know what I mean? Dylan White got knocked out. Within 48 hours, they announced his next fight, which was eight week, uh, ten week later. Am I right? Yeah, you are. Chisora's just got schooled. 48 hours later, they're saying that Chisora, there's a there's a fight here for you in two and a half week on another pay per view. Oh. I don't think that was Russ. I don't think that was serious, mate. They're just doing it for just internet hype. No, it I'm was just, serious. Said Robinson knocked it back. He went, "No, you can't do that. They'll be hell on. You can't do it. They knocked it back, mate. They were up for it. Derek wanted it. Derek David A wanted it. Ern wanted it. Sky didn't want it. That would have been a liberty of all liberties. A ten loss fighter. I mean, for another pay per view. How can he be in any sort of shape after he's been knocked about? You need rest and then a camp for who would have been abusing the fans. They couldn't go through with it. They saw the backlash. You saw the backlash, didn't you? The people spoke, right? You can't just go fight in a non-title fight and then three weeks later, after losing your 10th loss, have another non-title fight for pay-per-view. What? Are they having a laugh? Are they... Listen, mate, do you know my leg? It's all wet through. Do you know why? Eddie Hearns just took a piss all up my leg. Hey, do I look like a fucking lollipop? I'm not putting up with that. So I said my bit. It's greed at its worst reached into Corey. And do you know what? It's been going on far too long and I'm making a stand. And if anybody's got a problem with it, come see me. Because I know people in the industry who are saying to me, you know, I can't say, oh, Russ, but good on you. You see where I'm coming from? Because all roads lead to them, don't they? The establishment, aren't they? They've done it with snooker and darts and they're doing it with boxing now. All roads lead to them. If you say, oh, you get cut off, Joe Gallagher come out and said something, didn't he? Got cut off. You don't see Steffi Bull coming out saying, oh, dear, on social media. But he'll be saying it behind closed doors. See where I'm coming from? A lot of them will, but Joe Gallagher's come out because he wears his heart on his sleeve, doesn't he? He's got fighters that are upset, and I can understand that. And you've got to give Joe Gallagher credit. We all give him a bit of stick, don't we? Tesco, Joe, and this and that. But he goes, he sticks up for his fighters, doesn't he? Joe, get listen, Russ. Joe Gallagher go, will go to if you're with him. He's one of them people like you, you've seen enough of his interviews and see the way he reacts. I don't like the way some of the time, some of the stuff he's done and said and that. But you got to, you have got to give him credit. He will. Back for his fighters and back, back him to the hills. Hey, listen, even if the fighters are in the wrong, or even if it's listen, even if it's a close decision or whatnot, you, you see him after the the, the Smith Ryder fight. You know what I mean with the journalists. He was going mad at the journalists and that. And yeah. you, you, at the end of the day, listen, you got to, you, you you spend the time. He puts all his time into his fighters. And his fighters him. trust him. You've got, you've got. A, I feel for Joe Gallagher at the moment. Yeah, I'll, 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 I've got nothing but respect for him. For he for came him. out and he said, "Do you know what? I'm not happy with this. This is not right." He came out and said, "Well, how many more did? How many more? Has Dave Cobalt come out fighting for Opie Price or any of them other lads? No, he ain't, has he? Because he's having to tiptoe about now, isn't he? He's having to tiptoe. He's got the wrong Richards, hasn't he?" He's having to work with Warren, aren't he? So he's going to be like henpecked at the moment, isn't he? But they had their little run out, didn't they, last weekend, didn't they? Saying Del Boy won, you know, reading off the matchroom script. But listen, mate, there's people that have come out and said it's wrong. Joe Gallagher's one of them. There's somebody else I'm trying to think who else come out and said, what's going on here? I think Peter Fury might have said, so, so said something uh, a, a few weeks ago. I might be wrong. I think he said something like that. They were waiting for a date with Yui. Or something like that. Um, I can't remember now, but Joe Gallagher could come out and he made a statement and he did it in a few interviews. But where I think he let his son down in my eyes, he had he come out apologising for what he said, didn't he? I understand the, the, the racist thing that he got wrong, but the other stuff, he That's should have had to apologise for that, should he? He wants to make some fighters, doesn't he? With the with the with the with the uh, with the racist thing, he shouldn't have said that. Yeah, maybe he, he got his words that. mixed up. But the other thing, 
they were saying that he were, he were, he were whining or whatever, and Eddie were saying he were knocking fights back and all that, blah, blah, blah. He were going on about the money situation, wasn't he? Sky said the money's not changed, so what was the problem? Eddie Earn were crying over gate money. So basically, they need to get around the table and work it all out themselves. If the promoter needs to just make a little bit of money on a show instead of a lot, they need to do that to get these fighters out. Because if they don't, these fighters, careers are going to slip and they're going to, time's going to pass them by. And and you know what? There's no new kids joining gyms and that. Because they're all shut, aren't they? There's no amateur at the moment. Kids are going to go do something else, aren't they? In America, they're all, they don't even bother with boxing hardly, do they? That's why they aren't going to heavyweight champs. They do ba- baseball and all the other sports, don't they? Basketball. and Ones with helmets on, isn't it? Like NFL, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Running around with shoulder pads on. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like Suella doing. Do, do you know what? Just going back, I mean, right, yeah, you got, with Gallagher Scape, you got someone like Liam Smith. I mean, Liam Smith could easily challenge for another world title again and, and be really competitive mm-hmm. in a fight against someone who's, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say he beats any of the champions at 54, but, Really, can re you know? There, there's, there's a lot to work with there. And it, listen, he's not got a bad style. He brings it every time. And it, it's like he's got no man's land. I mean, wh- listen, where are all these dates in? He's got all these dates in America. There's all this alleged zone money. Why ain't he getting him? Why, why isn't he get? Why isn't he making fights out there? He's got Je- he's got he's got Jesse Vargas there. Why isn't he making a Liam Smith Jesse Vargas? That's a that's a decent fight. Why isn't that getting made for some in America or even in January in next year? Look, I'm just that that's just a potential scenario. You can we can sit here talking about potential fights to a blue in the face, Russ. What about his billion dollars that he had? How long is that? It's not there, no. it's, it's, it's not there, Russ. Come on, you we know that you you know that we know that. Billion dollar Eddie, who called it? Who called that from day one? Me. Do you know why? Oh, you boxing hard course. When you hear something in life, you know, my dad said to me once, I said, Oh, dad, I'm going to look at this car. Is how much is it? I said, it's five grand. I said, It's worth 12. He went, Don't buy it. I went, Why? He went, There's something wrong with it. Typical coal miner mentality. And I said, No, no, it's too good to be true. I'm going to look at it. No, don't go, don't go, don't go, he's saying. I'm going, no, I'm going to go, Dad, I'm going to go. And I didn't. I know somebody who didn't and got ripped off. So I've took that mentality into boxing so I could be sat in an office saying, Ali has somebody, I'm not going to say his name on here, but Ali or a certain promoter will come out with something. And I'll go, fucking, what a load of bollocks. And he'll go, oh, you're off again. And I'll say, I don't believe it. And you know what? For the first couple of years, I did believe it. I was a fanboy. Oh, wow, wow, look at that. I'd I'd speak to people in pub or I'd speak to certain people and I'd go, oh, you're not going to believe what we're going to be doing. And they'd go, fuck off. And it had never happened. Because the, the system, the boxing system is designed for it not to happen. It's designed for people to chat shit and have a meeting to chat shit and then arrange another meeting to chat a lo- lo- another load of shit and know whatever happens, all you're doing is chatting shit, shit chat as I call it. And eventually, after a period of time, it sinks in. It's a bit like going to prison and keep going and breaking your parole, breaking your probation and keep breaking your license. You keep going back and back and it's a vicious circle until eventually, it's like that with drugs, isn't it? We heroin or whatever, until eventually you just go, do you know what, what am I doing? But he, the penny has to drop, doesn't it, with some people? With me, it takes a bit longer. But you know, as you get older, you get mature, don't you? You see it yourself. When you when you saw that the zone thing, you must have thought, what a load of bollocks. Billion dollar Eddie. And it were, wasn't it? Because once once they scratched the surface, it weren't, it weren't that, was it? It were a lot less. But they had to protect themselves. You know, like they did with this book. It's big, it's number one bestseller, but it isn't because Rico sent me all lists here. It's like it's knackers, isn't it? It's knackers. But if somebody believes it, it's like Chisora. 
and Coogan. He went knackers, wasn't it? But he got 300,000 views, and, and they're saying, well, 3,000 people bought the pay per view. It's an extra 60 grand in pot. That's the mentality. Treat boxing fans like mushrooms, feed us shit, and keep them in dark. And that's what promoters do to everybody around you. They feed you full of shit, and you're kept in dark, you'll know on a need to know basis. And it's same for fighters, and that's got to stop. It's got to stop. And I'm hoping to change all that by calling these fuckers out. And like I said, if they've got a problem, they know what they can fucking do. I'm not hard to find. All of them, a lot of them, all of them, full of shit. I'm up to here with listen, listening to listen, shit talkers, chatting knackers. Listen, Ross, yeah, right. I'll, listen, I'm at a point now about well, these, YouTube, these YouTube, bo- people got to start calling these out, these YouTube boxing oh, channels. Now. They're up. not, they're not, they're, they're, they're not, I mean, I mean, listen, why isn't in Coogan asking about why isn't these fighters getting out? When you've got this and this this amount of money over this amount of years, and you've got you've got in you got in America, just say on the undercard of Jacobs Rosado, which no one cares about, no one cares about, and you've got D- Demetrius MJ fight, fighting another hundred and sixty pounder at super middleweight. Like who cares? In, and where these other you where these other UK fighters could be getting on their cards in competitive fights with the supposed money you've got, why why isn't these YouTube fighters saying, why are you not getting these out? How are you not getting these out? Why 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 isn't there not opportunities for certain fighters? Exactly. Like, exactly. Like, listen, I don't... Listen, Dave Allen, Dave Allen was going to fight on the card the other day. Yeah. You could have put in... You could have... You, just going back to someone like Beefy Smith, you could have put him on that card. On the Chisora's yeah. undercard, yeah. Against, I don't know what the finance, the the finance, you can make the finances work. Yeah. Have you ever felt? Yeah. Have you ever thought though, Matt, that Dave Allen and all them that week, they sold the hell out of the show, didn't they? Davy Day, Dave Allen, and Eddie Earn. Nobody else was telling it. But have you ever thought that Eddie Earn thought, Do you know what? We're not doing that many pay per views here. We could pull Dave Allen, Dave Allen off the show. Or tell him he can fight Mark Bennett or Simon Villali for a lot less money. Or pull them off and not pay out anything, but still had them selling hell hard at show, didn't they? So they get it's a double whammy. They get Dave Allen to promote the show, then he don't get a fight. But he did knock back two fights, didn't he? And I think a third one, I think one of Terry's mates, Joe, I forgot his second name now, I think he would offer it as well. But I do know that Mark Bennett and Simon Villali were offered it because Eddie said in his interview, now if they've had the fights, been offered the fights and Dave's knocked them back because it's less money. You can understand Dave doing that because he's in the Dave Allen business, isn't he? Now, if he's going to fight for chump change just to get a bit of money and he's not going to get a December date, but if he pulls out of that, them two offers, he'll get a December date and he'll get a better money. One, yeah. so It's a good decision for David, isn't it? But you've got a feel for him, aren't you, being messed about? But Eddie says he's relentless, though. So why weren't he relentless in getting Lovejoy into the ring and sorting it, sorting it out with Don King and paying them what they want, Mr. Relentless. Look, it, at the end of the day, it's a two-way street, isn't it? Some, fight, some fighters and managers are probably tough to deal with and they're probably more ag than what they're worth. And saying that, Joe Gallagher is probably the prime example of that. Maybe others. You yeah. know what I mean? So that it's just an easy excuse. It's an easy out for them. But... When they put, but at the same time, when they, when you're getting crap mismatches on telly, I mean, I mean, I'm indoors now for the next month. I'm not working. What am I looking forward to? I'm I'm looking forward to the bar Joyce. I'm looking forward to Heffer and Bentley's a good fight this Friday night. It's a good fight. Saturday, I'm nothing. Nothing interests me with the um, with the women's card at all on um, Sky. No. Nothing, nothing really. It's it not me that this this one the Katie Taylor show. Yeah, it doesn't. I've got no time for. Her. I thought she got beaten in like in, in them two person fights, so I ain't got time for the mate. Well, I mean that's not her fault. 
I, she don't control oh, that. Well, well. She knows what's going. She knows she could have come out after that first one and said she thought she got beat, and then I'd have got behind her. Awara Davis, when he got beat at your your call, you asked Rico and Terry. They were like, no way has he won that. And Awara Davis put the kids hand up and said, you know what, Vasquez beat me. I shouldn't have got the decision. You know, you know, since that happened, people have got behind Awara Davis and said, you know what, he's all right, Awara. He's just a match room. Use social media to make him look a mug, didn't they? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, interesting. So, well, it's a bit, but I just think there's got to be some big changes. For example, what are match room doing for Ritson? Ritson's just won. They've not spoke a word about him, have they? Why? You've not seen Ritson or Savannah Marshall, Yui Fury, Beefy, Callum Smith, John Ryder. Who else is there? Martin J. Ward. What, Natasha Jonas. Callum Johnson. The list is endless, isn't it? Swifty Smith. Although he might be retired, I'm not sure. There's ten fighters there. Not getting a looking, not getting looking, but they'll have Dave Allen out, Tom Little, uh, Dylan White, Chisora, they're his main two, aren't they? I think I think Eddie Hearn's looking at Dylan White and Chisora as his number two and number three pay-per-view guys now. Joshua, Dylan White. Oh, Yui Fury. Yui Fury in place of Swifty Smith. That's 10 kids, isn't it? 10. Mm. That's a there's, massive there's, there's, there's more. There's, there's more than we, we just can't think of. Yeah, no, yeah, but... Because they're not, but they're not relevant. When you look at it like this, Joshua's the number one, isn't he? That's his bread and butter. Dylan White's his number two go-to guy, isn't he? Chisora looks like he's his number three pay-per-view guy. I mean, he mm -hmm. offered him a pay-per-view the other day against Dylan White, three weeks after a beating. So that would have been another Chisora pay-per-view. If not, Chisora now knows that he's pay-per-view. Did they do that to keep him on side in case Frank Warren made him an offer to fight the loser of Joyce... Dubois, because you put Derry King in, loser of them or winner, that's a pay per view, isn't it? Dubois against Chisora or Joyce against Chisora on BT Sports, a pay per view. Or is Eddie Hearn worried that Tyson Fury might fight Chisora next year? Because it looks to me like they're not going to put Joshua and Fury together if there's no fans, doesn't it? Now, where do they take that for as well now? It'll be 2022. They're just going to keep us like we're like donkeys, aren't we? Chasing the carrot like that. And we're getting into the carrot and then to drive away like that. That's what's happening. It's in front of our eyeballs. They keep spinning narratives on social media. People keep falling for it. Oh, it's in talks. Oh, that's next. And it's repeat, 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 recycle, recycle, recycle. And it's been going on now for far too long. Same with Billy Joe Saunders. I don't know who's advising him. Well, we do. It's MTK, is it? MTK advises him. But nobody dare say a word. Why? Why should they get off scot-free? MTK have had Billy Joe Saunders. Well, I've been with Billy Joe Saunders a few years now, but he's been a world champion five years, right? Five years ago, they were calling out Canelo, weren't they? And Glofkin. Then fights hadn't happened. Have they? And they're not gonna. They're not gonna he's happen. Last. He's in a tune-up again next month. So who's advising? The, who's advising him? Who? Who's advising Beefy Smith? Because they're not delivering for him, are they? Who's advising Dave Allen? MTK. They, don't, they didn't get Dave Allen. At, what? They weren't relentless for Dave the other day, were they? Well, do, do you know what the problem is, though, Russ? What? Got too many fires, man. You with Fury? He's MTK. He's not getting fights, is he? Is Eddie Hearn freezing MTK out as well as Joe Gallagher? I don't know, but it looks to me like there's a lot of people there just not getting the fights that they should be getting. Some somebody at fault, isn't there? Or are MTK just biding their time and hopefully, uh, hopefully, get um, get us get dates from Sky themselves? Do you, I? I don't know, man. I'm telling you, now, listen, yeah. Russ. The worst thing Sky can do is give Matchroom another exclusive contract. Oh, if they give Matchroom another exclusive In deal, hundred days, hundred days over five years, 
if if Sky give match room under dates now, after everything that's gone on and what they've served us up since 2017, you know what, mate? They might, we might as well pack up and go on, haven't we? If they give them another hundred dates, he's got. I can't see it, me. I can't. I don't see Joshua being around in five years. I don't. I see Chisora Derek. and Dillian White punching for pay till the forty. No, I can see Derek being done within the next year. All right, look at it like this. Do, will Derek Chisora ever beat a world champion? And be, no, no, no. Will he, and, will he beat a former champion? Maybe I don't know, but he amps so far. Is Derek going to win a world title? No. Is Dylan going to win a European? Maybe. Will he go for a European? No, he thinks he's world level. So is Dylan White going to be Wilder, Joshua or Fury or Ergovic or Ortez? No. He keeps saying Ortez as an old man and he beat him. But he couldn't beat Povetkin. He was 41. Ortez is 42, is he? Go fight Ortez. So much. Go fight Ortez, Dylan. They're not going to fight him, will they? So does Dylan win a world title? No. If the belts get fragmented and, and there comes a good opportunity, maybe might pick up a regular. All right, then just tell me. It's like it's. A, I'd compare. I'd compare Dylan Dylan White's potential to win a world title to say, for example, Dave Allen to win a British. He's got to be very very lucky and say, for example, certain fighters have got to be moved on from that level before. Dave can can find a right dancing partner for the British that he can win. Same with Dylan White. If a vacant belt comes up, maybe, maybe. But you know, you got other people coming up. You've got Hergovic. You got Yoka. Yoka's at Yoka's out next month as well. He's fighting Does Christian Yoka, Hammer. Does Yoka beat Christian Hammer? Smashes him to bits, knocks him yeah. out. Punches won't go for won't go four rounds that. Does Yoka beat Dylan White? Yes. Mm, not sure. I've not seen enough of him oh. yet. Does he beat Yoka's Olympic gold medalist? He smashed Joe Joyce up, didn't he? Does he beat Dubois Yoka? Um... Does he beat Joyce again? Probably. Right. So if he beats Joyce, Dubois's got to be at least a 50 50, hasn't it? True, yeah. yeah. We rate oh, I'm going to spread no. that. We rate Dubois. Does he beat Ergovic? We, yeah, I don't rate Ergovic, me. I don't rate him. We, 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 the thing is, though, with Yoka, we need to see him in with tests. We need to see him stepping up them Does levels. Yoka beat Louis Fury? Um, I don't know. That's a 50-50, it? It'd, it'd be, it'd be probably be favourite in that fight. Yeah, but I'd, I'd like to think that's 50-50 because he hasn't been in with anybody like you, has he? But Yoka's a big six foot seven. Massive, massive puncher. Look what he did to Dave Allen. Dave's head were ringing on Euro Train. He says he was on Euro Train. He kept going, bang, 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 bang. his head were ringing. You know, like when Ali fought Foreman and he said, My head were like, bang, 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 on ropes. Well, Dave's head were like that. He was ringing, mate. That yoke is a massive puncher. Massive, massive. And he's going to be a force, mate. He'll be avoided him. He's the, Russ, he's the, Russ, though, he needs to get really active and step, well, he's stepped he's up quick. He's 27, isn't he? Hmm? He's 27, isn't he? Yeah, but he still needs to be stepped... Yeah, but you say he's only 27, but he's been a pro for four years now. He's what got is, to be stepped... What is he, 9-0 and oh or something like that? Oh, I'm not too sure of his record. I've not got his well, record up. But... Joyce, 36, isn't he? 35. He's only 13-0, and he? Or 12-0 and or something. I know, but you look at the you look at Joyce has been in with uh, Jennings, who's a fringe world level guy. I mean, Yoke has not been in with anyone on that level oh, yet. Yeah. So, good point. Good point. He, he needs to be stepped up. And he, listen, you can see what they're doing; they're gradually stepping him up. But he needs to be with a fringe world level, and they need to pay big money to get someone over and someone with a really good ranking where he can just sort of gate crash the party. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. I just think that uh, Yoka looks the part. He's undefeated. He knocks guys out. Olympic gold medalist. I can't understand why nobody's pushing him out there. You know, they don't seem to be falling over themselves for him, do they? I don't get that. 
I think I think I think the fr- I think what he's got going on in France is probably lo- probably very lucrative over there in him. He's probably he's probably getting on mainstream TV over there. He's he's massive over there, and yeah, he's mixed. eventually and he's missing eventually a star. As well. His missus is a star, isn't she as well? Yeah, they're big. They're big star. They're big. They're big. Uh, he's a big star over there. So. Um, He's fighting. Uh, he's fighting in. He's fighting in Nantes. Is it Nantes? In uh, I think it's November. November twenty seventh. So the day before the bar, Joyce. So um, yeah, we see. We we see. But yeah, him and Hammer won't go past four rounds. I don't think so. Oh, you know. We we see. I mean, uh, it's all to be desired, isn't it? It's all to be. Uh, all sort of be played out. Yeah, tell us a funny story, a funny boxing story. That's a funny box. Do you know what? I've not you sent me not... an email. Paul King, tell us a funny boxing story. Got any only funny boxing stories. Do you know what? I haven't, to be fair. I'll tell you one. Nazim Amit's WBO champion, right? Joe Calzaghe's WBO and Carl Thompson, WBO. This is a true story. They're in a limousine going to airport. They're going to a uh, convention, WBO convention. So they're flying out from airport. And Naz is sat in back at limo and he's saying, Carl, you need to do this. Carl, you need to do that. Now, I don't know if you don't know Carl Thompson. He's a, he's a blue collar guy. Do you know what I mean? He's, he, he's, I can explain it. He's just like. It's a no non, nonsense sort of character. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a Clinton Wood type. With- yeah, won't put up with no, uh, no. And he no said him, didn't he, Carl Thompson? So, so they're all a bit no nonsense. This that Clinton Woods, Carl Thompson. So, Carl, so he, he he's going on and on and on in Carl Thompson's ear up with that motorway M62. And Carl, you need to do this. You need to do that. My just get it all this um, cool and what was it? Wicked, wicked. He used to talk like that, didn't it? In his ear all the time and. and uh, and yeah, when, when I when I lift my belt up and do this and do that, and he, and he turned around. Eventually, Carl Thompson, Carl Zagger was sat there quiet. He could he could see you were going to explode, Carl Thompson. Carl Thompson turned around and said, "If I want to fucking pick someone, I'll just pick you up with your fucking jug ears." And I he said, "And I'll lift you up like that, like that, like FA Cup." <laughs> and he, because he said FA Cup, because I'll lift you up like FA Cup with them jug ears. And, uh, all right, shut your fucking mouth or something. Anyway, uh, and he shut up for the rest of the ride. <laughs> That's a true story, that. That's a true Stuck. story. But he's a lovely man named Carl Thompson, really lovely. Dennis rung him up one day and he goes, Carl, I've uh, I've got you a world title fight on this, uh, this date. And he went, oh, I'll, uh, Dennis. I'll just need to check what shift our lass is on. <laughs> he didn't say, uh, oh, Dennis, that's great for getting world title. Although he's a grateful kid, he just said, oh, I'll just need to check on calendar what, what shift our lass is on. So he's one of them straight up bloke, you know, a Clinton Woods type, you know. You see Clinton. Work, working class. Yeah, working class. Just, really just one, of, one of their own, one of their own sort of pe- yeah, people. Yeah, to see me the other day at, 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 at Factory Clinton. He went out for some lunch. But he's one of them people, Clinton. You see him coming out at Chippy. And go, Clinton Woods over there is coming out at Chippy. The world champion boxer. But what, so? What does that mean? Do you know what I mean? It's just people associate you with you. You're going to go out your pam, don't they, when you get to be a world champion? You're going to act different. And that. A lot of people keep their feet on ground, don't they? Do you know what I mean? Does that sound right? I suppose so, it depends. This is Nazim, Nazim didn't though, did he? Because he was flying around here, one of him Porsches. And here's another funny story about Nazim. We used to go to this place in Doncaster called Afro Caribbean Club in Hyde Park, and he went down there one night and he sat a stool in the middle of the dance floor and he had all these boys around him. He said, What the F am I doing in this dive? So somebody threw a bottle and somebody threw a pint pot and it just went. Whizzing by his ears. Do you know what car he got in? This is a true story. Go Google it. He got in a car, a Ferrari, 
All right, this is true. Got in this Ferrari and he zoomed off with whoever were in it with him. And he and he wrote it off on White Rose Way roundabout, and it weren't even his Ferrari. I think they loaned him it, hoping he was going to buy one. And he wrote it off, and he ended up leaving Doncaster in back of a Vauxhall course, Vauxhall Nova. He left in a silver Vauxhall SR Nova, and he left his mates there. And he's burnt off in that, and they made them get out. That's a true story. That's not keeping your feet on ground, isn't it? I'm not saying he would he would drink drinking and all that because he didn't drink, but. He liked wasting money on cars, but the point I'm making is you put your Clinton Woods as your Carl Thompsons, your Carl Frotchers to keep the feet on ground, don't they? Although Frotchers got two Ferraris, <laughs> but he probably don't get them out that much. But point I want to make is you've got to keep your feet on the ground, aren't you? you? See where I'm coming from? Yeah, I think he was he was he was at a time where um, He's making a lot of money. He's making oh, a lot of noise. Made, he? made 60 million pounds, mate. He's mega money. He are on mega money. He won eight mil a fight, wasn't he? For so many fights. He won a million quid a year off Adidas. He were on mega money, Matt. Nazim. Oh, he was at the top five years as well, wasn't he? He were on mega. He were a world champion five years, wasn't it? So he had mega dough, didn't he? Mega money. Mega money. He, Great he, fighter. He peaked. He, he peaked. Yeah. And he, I think he just lost interest in boxing because where he made so much money, he knew what life he, he come from and he knew where he's never going back to, Russ. And the thing is, as well, is that oh, he could, you look at you look at who come about after in the early two early two two thousands with uh, Pacquiao coming, Morales, um, even a Barrera. You, you look at all the fights he could have had there and. You, you 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 go into his CV. It, it's okay, but it's not it's not great, is it? Beat it's, not, it's, not, it's not it's not it's not what it could it's not what it could have been. But he got out of the game, didn't he? At twenty eight, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he did, he did, he did. And uh, listen, he's he's just eating what he wants now, and he's living his life. So I mean, but as a big Michelin man, a bit massive, isn't he? So massive, isn't he? Is it for his height and that? He's probably. Nearly as big as I was. Which... <laughs> do, do, so going back to keeping your feet on the ground, though, with him, he, that documentary, the build-up to the Barrera fight, is just um, a it just kick. goes to sh- yeah, it just goes to show you where he was at, and it was uh, it, yeah, it was it's an interesting watch. So watching now and again when I'm really bored, it's a good. Uh, it's a, but there it's were nobody around him, were there? I mean, all them arse lickers. Johnny Nelson were an Azim arse licker, you know. Johnny used to be his driver and wash his cars for him. That's a true story, mate. Isn't that right, Johnny? Yeah. I know you're watching. Johnny were an Azim arse licker. Okay. Johnny wouldn't have got a world title shot if he want for Naz. Naz told Warren, get Johnny a world title shot. He's my man. Johnny won Naz's man. He was an Obama Graham's man as well, Johnny. That's Johnny. Johnny Nelson used to go nightclubs in Sheffield. I used to see him, me and my mate from Malt. We used to go to so Johnny Nelson's over there. So, yeah. All oh, right. And then my other mate would come, who's that over there? We had old Bomber Graham. I saw the big black geezer. I got Johnny Nelson. Because they didn't know boxing. He said, well, I know Bomber Graham. I don't know him. He was the black geezer with Johnny Nel- with Bomber Graham hanging around Bomber. That's a true story, that. What have you done for Bomber lately, Johnny? Sod all. What have they all done? Glenn Rhodes has helped him, hasn't he, Bomber? But not many have. But he were, he were, yeah. hanging, out, he were hanging out at back of Nazim, Johnny. Whatever you saw Nazim, there were Johnny hanging out at back of him. Trust me, mate. Nazim made a joke and everybody laughed. Seen it with my own eyeballs. And it wasn't even funny. You know them jokes where you think, that will not funny. Eddie Earn, I've seen Eddie Earn crack them. I've seen Eddie Earn crack them jokes. I thought, that will not funny. Everybody's laughing because they they control the room, don't they? And the, they're like in charge, aren't they? When you're at that level, nobody's going to say out, are they? Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. But what's cracked a joke and it wasn't funny. I go, I didn't get that, Clinton. And he'd laugh himself. But Naz and Eddie, they can't do that, can they? Because their egos have gone that big, haven't they? See where I'm coming from? It's like Joe Gallagher. He's just pulled him and said, this is not right, yeah? You can't go against the grain. They cut him out, aren't they? Kel Brook. He ain't got a contract with Eddie. Ain't he allowed to speak to anybody else? He's got to... Kel Brook is in the Kel Brook business. Am I right? 
Absolutely. Kel Brooks Definitely. in the Kel Brooks. Dave Allen's in the Dave Allen business. We all give him a bit of stick for knocking them fights, but I can see a bigger picture now. Kel Brooks got to look after Kel Brook. If he's not had a fight for nearly a year or whatever, and Eddie's not delivering for him, he's got to go out and get his own fight. And then, so what they've wrong, Eddie? Can you get it on Sky? No, nah, no, nah, you didn't come through with me. Well, you weren't doing no for me. Now we're giving you a chance to get us on Sky and get us a few quid and you get yourself a few quid. Can you do it? Cut him off. But really, mm -hmm. Sky didn't have the budget. So Eddie's turned it. And you, Eddie? Fucking lying cunt. This, this <laughs> emphasises the whole problem about having this exclusive deal. Eddie's if, turned if he, it from. Because this is the problem with having exclusive deals. You've got to go through the promoter. Sky could have gone and got that fight. Yeah, listen. Yeah, no one is talking. No, yeah, exactly. You, no one's talking about this fight, Russ, at the weekend. This no, has gone totally under the radar. Oh, no, you know why yeah, nobody's this... talking about it? Because all them other YouTubers, they don't say a fucking word. They don't say anything about it because they don't want to be seen to upsetting the fucking big troll, do they, Eddie Earn? If this were a fairy tale, he'd be fucking trolling that bridge, mate. I'm telling you, he's a bad cunt. He's a bad cunt, and he'll go and leave boxing in a mess like his old man did years ago. Eddie, you're a cunt. But nobody's going to tell him, are they? Because they all want to get to the pot of gold. They probably tell the wives and the, and the fighters in confidence, but they're not going to tell him, are they? They're not going to do. Sky didn't have a budget for Kelbrook, right? But it but cost Kel... Sort of like spoke to Adam without telling Eddie, but I've heard Eddie know. Eddie's spun it round and say, no, we're not getting you a date. <clears throat> you went behind me back. And it's a message to everybody else then. So if Warren comes along with any offers for anybody, like Chisora, Dylan White, or Dave Allen, or any of them, they'll all be frightened to fucking death. They'll be frightened to death. Because if you jump out of bed with Eddie and in with Warren... They've heard all horror stories off Eddie, haven't they? <clears throat> Eddie's turned them all against Warren, hasn't he? He's made it so fucking hell, you don't want to wait with Warren, you'll not get paid. So they're all frightened to death, but there's no proof of that. That's why we have a board of control. But they've heard horror stories, haven't they? But he's the one putting the horror stories out, because look what he's done with Smiths. Look what he's done with Beefy Smith. Yeah, hey, leave Frank, come and see with me. It's better over here. Well, it obviously yeah. weren't because Frank Warren got him a world title. They got him Canelo fight. Got him that Mungia, Jamie Mungia. What has Eddie got for him? Threw him in with Eggington, and that's it. That's it. And that way, you look at you look at look at Liam Williams' his career compared to uh, Liam Smith's, exactly. and it's in, it's not it's night and day. Most it's night and day, isn't it? UK Liam Smith, Liam, the Welsh kid, isn't it? You on about Liam Williams? Yeah. Most yeah, exactly. tip your hat off to him, aren't they? Him and Dominic Ingle. Most improved fighter in the last 12 months. Liam Williams. Gone from strength to strength, hasn't he? Yeah, he'd be fought, he'd fought and the he will fight Andre next unless Andre the case. Would you put Beefy Smith? Right, listen to this, right? Frank Warren will be looking at all this and be thinking, the tide's turning, mate. Beefy Smith, Frank will be thinking, I can put him in with Kelbrook if Kelbrook loses against Crawford. Beefy and Kel. Kel's fell out with Eddie. We'll make that. Or he might be thinking, I'll put Kel in with Amir Khan and do something Eddie Earn can't do. Kel, Brooke, Amir Khan and Beefy Smith. There's a trio there, isn't there? Throw in somebody else from America and you've got some good fights there, haven't you? Who else is there that Frank could work with? He won't get John Ryder because he's with Simsers and they won't work with Warren. And Simsers train John Ryder, don't they? But... Who's the other ones? If the, if Beefy Smith ends up crossing the street and works with Joe, Joe might repair relations with Frank. Callum could go. Callum's no contract with Eddie Earn. You're going to see a mass exodus soon because they can't they can't keep everybody happy. It's all right signing people so that they don't go with Frank Warren, but you've got then got to deliver for these people. You can't just park them up. You can't just park kids up. You know what it I mean? Callum, you look at where you look at where Callum. Sorry, Russ, doing the right way. Right. But look where look where Callum Smith is in his career. Yeah, Russ, he'd be better off going with um, he'd be better off going at PBC to where his career is at now. Right. If he's a well, free yeah, agent, he doesn't sell a ticket in England, does he? No profile. Yeah. yeah. You, 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 there's the plant fight there. 
there's the Benavides fight there. Um, there's obviously there's other big, big there's big middleweights he's got there. He's got Charlo there who will be going up to sixty eight. There's there's good there's good fights there. There's good paydays there for him. Yeah. Who, who, who's he going to fight? What Saunders? You look at it from this is from Cam Smith's perspective. Saunders, what on a potential pay per view? How many buyers is that going to do? That's not going to really. It's not going to do a big gate and big pay per view numbers. What's be... he done for Saunders? Done nothing, has he? Has he delivered a world title for Saunders? No, Frank delivered them both. Did I deliver yeah. one for Callum Smith? No. He did deliver one for Beefy Smith. No, Frank got him that. So all these people with world titles, they've all did Josh Warrington. Frank got Josh Warrington a world title, didn't he? Jo, who got Carl Frampton it? Well, that Frank Warren as well. Carl Frampton won it, yeah. So who got what? Frank, yeah, Frank Frampton. Frampton. He got that with Frank Warren, didn't he? So mm. Frank got all over the line, didn't he? While Eddie were trying to milk him for non pay for. Eddie was trying to milk Warrington, one here, not gave him a world title. I oh, will keep milking it, we'll keep milking it because he didn't rate him. And Warrington ended up as good as all the rest of them, undefeated. World champion gone through every level, Josh Warrington, had he? But Eddie looked to me like he wanted to keep milking him in, uh, in Leeds, do you know what I mean? And not put him in an R5. But he wanted to test his same Warrington, didn't he? And he's come, he's, he's been good, hasn't he? He's given us some good nights, isn't he? I just think that this mentality, this accountant by name, accountant by nature mentality, it's got to stop. We've got to see some rolling at dice. We've got to see some fights. For five years now, we've been saying, oh, Billy Joe and Canelo, or oh, Billy Joe and Glofkin. It hasn't happened. For two and a half to three years, we've been hearing Fury Joshua, Joshua Fury. It hasn't happened, has it? Right. We're going into 2021. Tyson Fury has been a pro 13 year, 2021. Joshua's, it's nine years since Olympics when we get by Christmas. They still aren't fought. Are they ever going to fight? Is it going to be a Pacquiao Mayweather where they fight when they're past it? But we all buy into it anyway. Or will it get overcooked like the Kelbrook Khan? Because whoever puts that on pay per view, God, they're going to have to do a selling job on that. Aren't There's going to have to be some scripts wrote, isn't there? Because it's gone. It's a bit past its date in it now. Yeah, it, it, there'd have to be some circus of a press conference to. There is some what? <laughs> circus of a press conference <laughs> to sell that. that. You know, you, that's the way that happened. But just on Fury Joshua, yeah. Before I, I want to just go. Before I go, yeah, I'm just going to go on to Canelo quickly and then go on okay. to Brook Crawford. Yeah, just on that 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 I the, the Joshua Fury fight. You know these fights, they don't work in Saudi Arabia. I picked someone up the other week who lives in Saudi Arabia. Got talking to him, Russ, and he was, uh, I, was I was like, um, did you go to the Joshua fight? He was like, yeah, because he lives right where the, near where the Joshua fight was. And he said, it, it just doesn't work. He said, it was full of Saudis ringside, he said, and there was not many English people there. The atmosphere... Oh, booze there, was there? The, yeah, there's no booze there. You can't drink. It's a, obviously it's forbidden there. But he said it just doesn't work in Saudi Arabia. It just doesn't work altogether. Like just boxing, it, the atmosphere, it was dead. So it, it, it's a pure, it, going over there, it's just a pure money grab. Do you know what I mean? This you know, but that, that's coming from no someone who attended the event. Because, pardon? You've got no scruples. Joshua did, did, Joshua fought Povetkin, stood up in ring at Wembley and he said, I'm not budging from here, I'm here for you fans. Then what did he do fight after? Jogged on to fight, fight uh, in New York and then Saudi. They're not bothered about the fans. They just spin another story on, on social media, YouTube or Sky, and, and they just have tunnel vision. It, it's like robbing a bank get, and people seeing you on CCTV, but they can't know about you because you're connected to whoever. You, it's madness, honestly. It's just lie upon lie after that's one big fucking lie, mate. Joshua will fuck a snake. If he gets offered 100 million to fight in China, they'll go to China. They won't think about all them fans that can't afford to go out there, the fans that have, been, have paid for him. That's when all the casuals all turn on him, but it don't matter then. The, 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 the game's up in it. They've, they've reached the promised land yet again, aren't they? 
They're not bothered about fans. They'll spin all that narrative, but they'll ride off into the sunset with hundreds of millions. They're not bothered about the fans. It's about money. It's not about fans. It's about money to them. Mm. They just say what they want. It's like politicians. Come here, Rocky. They're like politicians, mate. They're pissing up your leg. My leg's been wet 10 years with this idea, and I think you're all right. But I mean, Sometimes in life, you just don't like me, Eddie. You fucking annoy me. Canelo situation, what do you think? I think that it's worked out well for Dazon because they were fucked, weren't they? They've let him go, haven't they? But if if Canelo, if look, they wouldn't have let him go if he were building channel up. They've let him go to get out of them suing them and to and because he were going to sue them. If Canelo can't build that channel up, who have Dazon got that can build it? Come on. Got no one now, have they really? Got 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 a young Brian, got a young Brian Garcia coming up who will do some numbers because he's a popular kid. Not a Canelo. He's, he's not a Canelo. He's not. He's not. He's not. He's a work in progress. The the money right. that Eddie Hearn spent, right? With what what are they saying he spent? He's had so he's had his cut of hundred and fifteen million, but he said there was a billion, oh billion dollars. But his, his actual cut was twenty percent or hundred and fifteen million in two years. So if he's had twenty three million quid in two years, he ain't done bad, has he? For matchroom, has he? If that's what he's had. But has he had more? We don't know, do we? If that's his cut off that's own, he'll have had gate money, sponsorship, and all other stuff, only foreign TV rights. You could double that, but he's had it off on in two years. Got mm. in, got his money, snuck out, snipered in, snipered out. He don't care about American fans. He's in the Eddie Earn business. Don't let the fight to be bigger than the promoter. That's his Don King saying, but that's his saying now, isn't it? When do you see Joshua Boatsy, Callum Smith, Callum Johnson on any podcasts doing any interviews? You don't, but you see Eddie Earn out there daily. I see more of Dave Colwell and Tony Bellew and Eddie Earn than I do my own kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's it, yeah. So, but it is what it is, isn't it? it? You know what? I, I do think that there was a dodgy... I do... I'm sort of... I'm with the theory that there was a dodgy contract involved with that Canelo because there's no way Golden Boy would just let him go just like that unless there was a... There was a... There was money money to pay to get out the contract undisclosed amount of money or there was a dodgy contract there and I think the, the zone it was just nice probably for them to cut tyres it's an expensive it's expensive for them to put him on with the opponent as well and and now you look at you look at um, you yeah you look at Golden Boy I haven't got him anymore and the, it's just it's just you don't let someone like that go, especially if you've got him tied up to a good contract. So I think Saints Dodgy's gone on there. And now you've got all them middleweights, super middleweights who were signed with Matchroom just to get that Canelo fight. And now it's fucking further away from ever, isn't it? Now it's what? Further away from ever. What fight is that? Well, just any Matchroom fighters versus Canelo. So you're looking at like, so you're looking at Andrade. Saunders, Callum Smith. Who wants They'd... to see that Andrade? I think he's shite. I don't want to watch him. He's like, you know when it, you know when Lawrence Coley comes on telly, I turn it off, mate. I do. I turn it off. I turn it. Straight off. Andrade, I'm... turn off. No, I want to on. see him against someone. I want to see him in a 50-50 where he can lose. I want to see proper fighting, man. I don't want to yeah. see Gallagher, a Coley, and Andrade, mate. No, true. I'll tell you what we finish up on that, Russ. Brooke Crawford, what do you think as it goes? I'm going to win, and I'm going to have a bet on him to win by knockout, right? because odds are quite good, I've been told. But my heart wants him to win, but my head says that he gets schooled, took to school, because he's too inactive. I don't want to hear all this about I'm big, I'm a beast at 147. Yeah, but... You walk around it a lot heavier than that. One four seven, he always looks drained against the top guys, doesn't he? Mm. So I think he gets beat, but I hope he doesn't because if he wins that, the the people will be begging him to sign with them, and he can say, 
fuck you, Eddie. Do you know what I mean? And Eddie could say, you know what Eddie will say? Oh, Kelly, it was strategy to spur you on to win. It'd spin it like that, wouldn't you, Eddie? Apples and pears mm. plot up, cheeky Nando's. You don't get all that crap, that Essex crap. You got gangster crap talk. <laughs> gangster, doesn't he, Eddie? Got Essex gangster, Eddie Earn. Fucking dumb. Do you know? Do you know what this fight? Though? I think that um, I think Crawford. He don't. I don't think he punches the hardest at forty-seven because he's come up the weights in me. I don't think he's the hardest puncher, but I just, I just hope that he can be competitive and he just, if it gets, I hope he get don't get too one-sided, which I can see it get him too one-sided because Crawford will just punish him and he it just end up taking a sustained beating and getting. Picked apart rust, you know what I mean? So I've, I've got I've got Crawford to do him in seven to twelve, you know what I mean? And that's nine to five at the minute with the bookies, as we were calling yeah. this. So there's a little plug there. Mm. If you want the kill book KO, that's either or seven to twelve or one to six is sixteen to one. Last time I looked, they're not behind him, are they? Nobody's behind him on this, are they? Nobody's doing any videos in it. Nobody's doing any videos on YouTube about Kelly. There's a press conference that a few of the YouTubers picked up. I think he's done a few interviews. I heard him on um, the Five Live podcast uh, earlier on. I heard, I think he's done one with um, your mate Gareth A. Davis. I think I, like so he's got. He's, he, <laughs> I knew you. I knew you'd take Gareth the bait. A. Davis, you're a fucking rimmer. Get your tongue out, Tyson Fury's arsehole. Yeah, go on. But you've not heard it on Sky. It's not getting... I mean, Premier Sports, it's not a channel I subscribe to. And... Oh, it's it's a, it's a sad... It's sad. It's sad if he goes out and... If it, if it goes out. But it's the way it ends up all the time. And uh, I just... Oh, it's just frustrating. I'm a Kilbert fan, Russ. I'm sure you, I know you are as well. And it's just, it just frustrates me because it's just you know what, a Kilbert lot. Of... Reminds me of, it reminds me of Billy Joe in a way because, but Billy Joe, maybe he might take them elite fights soon and get beat. And his career, I don't think Kel's got out third gear until he fought the Golovkin and Spence. Till then, he'd never really been out third gear. Had it? Billy Joe, mm, Paul, 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 a fight. He really had to be on the ball with it. Yeah. Okay, then. So he's had three fights where we could say he's had to. He, he were up against it. The others, now maybe Carson Jones won, but I thought he won that comfortably, or at least by three rounds. But he's had three fights where they've been tough fights out of forty odd fights. Right, three at forty. One or forty-two fights or not? Is he thirty-nine and two, something like that? Yeah. So forty-one fights, three of them were, were 50 fifty-fifty fights. But the other, well, you couldn't call Golovkin a fifty-fifty, but three hard fights, yeah. So what? What were other thirty-eight? Do you know what I mean? Mm. What we're doing all that time, we were advising them. All it's not the fights, all them training camps. When he were 20 and 0, Kel, are we ready for a world title rate? Right? So all them training camps since then, he's wasted 18 training camps because he only had three hard fights. The other 18 camps were for what? Why are you putting yourself through a 13-week camp to blow somebody away who you can blow away easy anyway? Because Kel blows them away, doesn't he? If Kel's going to blow them, what's the point of having camp? You know what I mean? That's how I look at it, but it is what it is, isn't it? But he's, he's not even had a run at light middleweight properly because certain promoters not been able to carve out the opportunities because the opportunities have been in America elsewhere. But you're such a you know, oh, it's just it's just frustrating because we've missed out on some good fights. We missed out on some good fights, but such is life. I think it's boxing, isn't yeah. it? So yeah, I think we'll call this video the Eddie Hearn roast. Yeah, well, we need to. The Eddie, we'll get a picture of Eddie Hearn and a big old turkey. We'll stick his head on it. The Eddie Hearn roast. Because, Eddie, you need fucking roasting what you're doing to boxing, you prick. Team Al Eamon. 
making the fights. Team Al Heyman, you are. He's they're, they're making the fights. Team Lou DeBella, Team Mick Hennessy. <laughs> Needs to do something, doesn't he? All right then, Matt. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure. And I you will too, mate. see you later on in the week, my friend. You take care. You too, mate. All the best, mate. Okay. God, sir. Bye, mate. There we go. Well, that were Matt from Essex. He lives right the corner from Eddie Earn's office. I said, go around and throw eggs on his Rolls Royce, Matt. Uh Enjoyed that, blowing a bit of steam off all you people. Okay, Kirky, I'm in a day. I can. You're going to stop me. It's my channel. But no, I want to thank you all for liking and subscribing, <laughs> leaving a comment. I think I need to give my camera a wipe. Like and subscribe, leave a comment. If you like the video, share it. Uh, what time is it? 10 o'clock. It's a bit late to be putting this video out now, isn't it? But uh, we'll put this video out tomorrow and uh, give you all something to watch. All right. Uh, if there's anything else I wanted to say before I went, shout out Innovation Alloys. Big shout out to them. There was something else. I should have jotted it down, should I? Beyond Boxing, Terry Chapman Armour's pad uh, pod. If you go on to the Beautiful Boxing Podcast, you'll see it on there. Just click on episode two. That's a good one. Uh, I think that's about it, really. There's not really much. Clinton Woods uh, Boxing Gym or Fitness Gym. Sheffield, get you sent down there when it opens again. Get Clinton training, yeah. Big shout out, Robin Reed. Out you well, Robin. Uh, big shout out Peter Fury, Savannah, Yui, Frank in Berry, and Dave in Berry. How are you doing, Frank and Dave? Hope you're well. I'll come and see you soon. Come and see your uh, big, big uh, staffy dog, is it Dave? Saturday with Sunday dinner, beef and Yorkshire's out in its bowl. Go on, Dave. Uh, I think that's about it. Big shout out to Jay Roberts. How are you doing, Jay? Hope you well. Big porky follower. What else is there? Shout out to somebody from uh, Dalton who got me a passport form. Thank you very much. I still haven't filled that in. Short term memory loss. Well, I think that's about it. I think it's time for bed. What do you think, Rocky? Oh, wait, is it time for bed? Come here. Come here, say hello. Come and say hello. Come and say hello. Rocky's not big on laughs, are you, Rocky? Mickers. Mickers. What's the matter? Hey, you want to say hello to Porky followers? Hey, somebody said they wanted to say hello, Rocky. You always look like world's going to end, don't you? Hey, shout out to uh, Lady Marsh up at uh, up north somewhere. Hope you're well. Still waiting to do a, a podcast with you. You're not going to bottle it out, are you? The eye bogey is rocky. I'm getting that wood in, getting that wood in morning, eh? What do you reckon? Run, run legs off you. So that's about it then. Peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep sporting boxing. Fantastic sport.